I am Gregory and this is Penzane. Yes, so this is my 20 pen case loaded with 21 pens. <laughs> uh, and these are my currently inked pens for May 2023. So, um, just a quick sneak peek here first. So we have those, those, and a pen in the middle there. <laughs> so let's take a look at the 21 currently inked pens for May 2023. All right, so first up, we have the Cross Beverly. Uh, this is the Satin Chrome. with a medium nib. That is loaded with cross green. Next up, we have the Ferris wheel press carousel. This is, this color is called After Hours, nice dark blue. a medium nib and that is loaded of course with ferris wheel press stroke of midnight now there's some some sheen and there's some shimmer and sadly you're probably not picking it up it's always difficult to get that that lighting but uh, yeah, nice dark blue with lots of character. So I'm really enjoying that. And this was actually the uh, pen I was carrying around today. So I'm filming this on the second. I had hoped to get this out for the first, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, so very nice. Next up, I have quite a collection of these Phil Cowell Italian fountain pens, a brand that no longer exists. Uh, this is the Phil Cowell Angel, and the color is Amber Pearl, which I think is a very, very fitting name. And has a fine nib and that is loaded up with a perfect perfect ink for it diamine sepia love that some nice shading on there then we have the mahjong c4 uh, you may or may not remember, I had some issues with this one, but those have been resolved. So this is just the, the clear. Uh, did it come in other colors? I don't know. Maybe not. And it has the medium nib. And for those that aren't familiar, this is a, a Japanese style eyedropper pen. So it has a rod with a stopper. So when this is screwed all the way down, uh, it stops ink from flowing into the nib. So you don't get that burping and, and you know, it's safe for, for uh, air travel. Although is this too much ink for air travel? I don't know, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, so very nice. and. That is loaded with Birmingham Pen Company smoke box. Some heavy, heavy shading on there. That's that's a very nice, very nice, uh, cool leaning gray. Then we have the Mahjong T1, and this is in 
Vintage Brass. Has a medium nib. That is loaded with a beautiful, beautiful ink. Krishna Super Rich Candle Day. Or Candle Day for short. <laughs> I love that. Oh, gorgeous. And again, heavy, heavy shading. I am so glad I have inked this one up again. This is the Monteverde Mega. Of course, now they have, uh, is it the Super Mega? But you know what? I love this thing. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. So this is the Mega in black. And it has a super, super smooth broad nib. This thing is glorious, glorious to write with. I just wish the branding wasn't so obvious on there. <laughs> it really ruins the look of the pen, but oh dear. <laughs> and then that is loaded with Schaefer Scrip Green, which is definitely not green. That is green. That is blue. <laughs> but... Hopefully you can pick it up because, and on my preview is very, uh, there you go. It has tons, tons of sheen. And that came as a surprise, so yeah. Yeah, you're picking that up real good. Oh, so, you know, I, I now forgive it for not actually being green. <laughs> All right, then we have a nice little pocket pen here. The Monteverde Mini Jewelria in Cobalt Blue. It screws on to post. And then it's a full-size pen. That's it was nice. And that is a medium nib. And this is just loaded up with uh, cartridge of uh, Monteverde black. Very nice black, actually. Then we have one of my favorite models from Monteverde, the Ritma. This, of course, is the orange. Sadly, this one does not have the famous pop. Yeah. So, not sure about that. And the nib has had issues of drying out. So there's something something wrong there. But nevertheless, I wanted this in orange to join all the other colors that I have. <laughs> Love me a good orange pen. And this is actually a fine nib. And a surprisingly good fine nib. If you know me, <laughs> you know I'm not really into fine. But this one's not bad. Not bad at all. So, and it's actually, the line is surprisingly thick for fine. So, that may have something to do with it. <laughs> and this is loaded up with another wonderful ink from Krishna, uh, Caramel. I don't really think of caramel as being orange. I usually think of it as being like a tan color, like a dark tan maybe, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of brands of ink that have a caramel color and none of them to me look, actually look like caramel. <laughs> oh man. All right, so this one is up next. Another Monteverde, Trees of the World, and this is Avenue of the Baobabs. 
I'm probably mispronouncing that. <laughs> but this is a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. As soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. Oh, just, yeah, it's not, it's not real wood, but it's made to look like wood. Yeah. Um, and this is a 1.1 stub. And I do have to say, you know, I'm still on the search for the perfect stub nib, which again, so far is Kaveco. Uh, but Monteverdi is pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. This is very good. And this is beautifully, beautifully loaded up with one of the newest inks in my collection. Uh, Diamine Ink Vent 2021 Brandy Snap. Beautiful, beautiful shading on there. I love that. All right, then we have the Narwhal, uh, spelled Navalur, <laughs> uh, Nautilus, and this is the Bronze Corydoras, which is a type of fish. The look of this pen, originally I was going to get, they have the new ones that are very colorful, and I think specifically it was... Uh, Los Angeles, super, super colorful, but then I saw this, and I love me some bronze, so yeah, <laughs> and the, the port, uh, portholes, portholes, uh, those really make this pen, it, oh, that, and the sort of, in fact, hopefully you can see how ornate that cat band is, Stunning, absolutely stunning. So I love that. And this is with a broad nib. And that is loaded with one of my favorite purple inks, Octopus Fluids Aubergine. I love that. Again, wonderful shading, wonderful shading. Then another narwhal. This was actually my first narwhal. Purchased not long before the Nautilus. So, uh, and I, I looked this up on Google and according to Google, uh, is it, Pennsylvania? I, I think there's a river in Pennsylvania called the Schuylkill, and that's how the locals pronounced it, Schuylkill. So, um, yeah, if somebody knows otherwise, please let me know down in the comments, but according to Google, it's pronounced Schuylkill. So, uh, and this is the Dragonet Sapphire gorgeous oh I love this pen so much <laughs> oh man and this is in an absolutely glorious double broad so so good oh all right and that is loaded up with Monteverde Capri Blue. That's a wonderful, wonderful blue. I love that. So now one of my focuses has been getting new old stock vintage pens. Uh, so here we have the Parker 45. I don't know if you can tell, but it's blue. It's a nice dark blue has that classic look to it. And a semi-hooded nib in medium. And I don't know 
if you can see it, but they designate medium, probably can't see it too well, but they designate medium ride there. Yeah. And that is loaded up, of course, with Parker Quink Black. And I got a little too excited with my swipe there, so I swiped the, <laughs> the letters too. That is a juicy, juicy pen and a juicy, juicy medium. <laughs> I, oh, amazing. Then it's modern day counterpart. Not the exact same model, obviously, but uh, this is the Parker IM in black. Slightly beefier pen and an all metal pen, I believe. Yeah, all metal pen. And this is with a medium nib. That, of course, is loaded up with Parker Quink Blue, which was one of the cartridges, cartridges that came with it. Very nice blue. I don't like the blue as much as the black, but yeah. Still very, very nice. And by the way, I picked this up in a, a gift set at Staples. <laughs> I'm not going to remember who was showing this, unfortunately. But someone was showing the Pelican Jazz Elegance. This is in white. Has one of those darn stickers. And this is a medium nib. That is loaded with one of my favorite reds, Visconti Red. And there's just something about red ink coming out of a white pen. I love it. <laughs> All right, then we have the Pen BBS. It's marked 266, but I understand these are now called the 308. Uh, and for lack of the proper name, we'll call this the White Swirl Demonstrator. Um, at, at one point I knew what this was called, um, but then I, I couldn't find that information again. So, and I believe these are, these are sold out. So, or discontinued maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm calling it the White Swirl Demonstrator. I, I want to say it was it was called White Smoke or something like that, which I can see that as well, but I, I figured I'll just call it White Swirl. <laughs> and this has a fine nib. It's It's been working better for me. Um, I'm still pretty disappointed with the pen overall, and as a result, eh, I, I'm not going to jump at getting any more pen BBS pens. Um, this has kind of been a, a miss for me. It looks amazing, though. And that is loaded up with Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. Very nice. Oh. One of my favorite pens in my collection. This thing is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. So this is the Ranga Abamanu. And the, the color or colorway is called Fire Dancer, which makes a lot of sense. See, because it's basically like smoke and flames. So that's, oh, that's wonderful. I, I absolutely love Ranga pens. And this has a broad nib on it. Wonderful, wonderful. And that is loaded up with another new ink for me, Diamine Earl Grey. I do have to say, it's a very, very dry combination. There's only one pen out of all these 21 pens that is drier than this one. Then we have another new old stock vintage pen. 
and one of my absolute favorite brands of pens, Schaefer. So this is a Schaefer 440 Imperial in green. I forget what they call that kind of <laughs> that kind of nib, but it's a, a medium nib inlaid, inlaid, an inlaid nib. Beautiful. That's a medium. I don't like that. It's just friction fit. There's no click or snap or anything. <laughs> so it's like, uh, is it all the way on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suspect that was a common a common thing with vintage pens, but still a very good pen. And that is loaded with Montegrappa, Harry Potter, Slytherin Green. And I, I don't know if you'll be able to pick that out. Uh, but that's a, that's a, a stunning ink. It does have some sheen to it. I'm trying to move it around so you can hopefully catch a glimpse of the sheen. Yeah, and it's a nice very dark green. Uh, sh basically shading from from a dark green to almost black. And then you have the, the sheen. Um, I almost think it's like a purple sheen. I could be wrong. Very nice. All right, then we have another new old stock vintage pen, another Schaefer. This is the Schaefer Agio Compact in black. One of these little pocket pens. And you post it and it's a really good size. Has some nice uh, knurling? I don't know if that's the correct word for it. It has these grooves in the section that give you a, a nice grip on it. And that is a medium nib. I don't know if you caught that, but that is what I like. That's super nice. Yes. So that is loaded with Schaefer Black. I believe that was a cartridge that came with it. I could be wrong, or maybe it's... I think it's one that came with it. Next up, we have what is my only vintage used pen. Um, it includes plenty of scratches and tooth marks and who knows what else. I've been told that you can clean these up pretty well and get rid of a lot of those marks, but I consider it part of its story, so I'm just going to leave it that way. Um, but this is the Schaefer Craftsman Touchdown in burgundy and the touchdown mechanism if you're not familiar and i'm not the best person to explain it but you unscrew this pull, pull it out which pulls out a metal rod which compresses the ink sac in there and then you put the the tip in the ink and then you push it back down which ex slowly expands the the ink sac and it slowly draws in the ink. You have to leave it in the ink for several seconds, maybe as many as 10 seconds uh, for, to allow the ink to go in there. And you can repeat that process too. And I've, I actually had quite a bit of ink in here, so. <laughs> All right, and this is a medium nib. And in taking off the cap, I noticed the ink is having some crusties there. Yeah, so I don't know. This this is probably not going to survive the month. <laughs> um, yeah, but that is a medium 
14 karat gold nib. And that is loaded with Monteverdi Sweet Life Cherry Danish. And that is the driest combination out of all the 21 pens. But still quite enjoyable to use it. Then going from one of the driest pens to what many people consider a gusher, a Twisby Eco and Transparent Yellow. I adore Twisby Eco, it's one of my absolute favorite pens. And this has the medium nib. And that is loaded with Twisby Black. It is very likely my favorite black ink. And last but not least, this is one of the earliest pens in my collection. I don't know how early, but certainly within the first year of collecting fountain pens, I picked this up. So this is the Twisby Go in smoke. Kind of a goofy looking pen, but it works really well. This is with a, a fine nib. Honestly, when people talk about the Twisby Go, I usually kind of nudge them towards the Twisby Swipes, which are essentially the same thing, but much better looking uh, and more um, options as far as, as far as filling them, including a spring uh, converter. Yeah, that's a, a fine nib and it's surprisingly smooth. So, and again, I, I'm not a big fan of fine nibs. And that is loaded with Waterman Serenity Blue. And hopefully you can pick up some of that sheen there. And that's it. That's my 21 currently inked pens for May 2023. Um, some of these probably won't survive too long through the month, um, such as that uh, Schaefer, but I have plenty of other pens to... <laughs> I, I don't think I'm gonna run out. <laughs> yeah, so just a quick look at these again. There we go. And um, I do want to give another plug to Paper Mind. Um, this is one of their their own products, uh, a Cosmo Air Light Twin Ring Notebook. Um, I, I am going to be doing a review of this, but I think you could see in, in a lot of what I was showing there, the performance of this. So. You could probably guess um, what my opinion on this um, notebook is. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you stuck around for this whole thing. <laughs> uh, and I will see you next time.